If you're a gun owner in Hendricks County, you have a choice to make in the upcoming May 7 primary between Representative Greg Stewerwald and challenger Brian Pash. Who is the pro-gun champion? Stay tuned, guys. We're going to break it down for you right now. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with the Indiana Firearms Coalition with a really big update for gun owners in Hendricks County. We're talking about House District Number 40. It's located right here for those who are curious where we're talking about. And it features a longtime incumbent, Representative Greg Stewerwald versus challenger Brian Pash. The question we're always trying to answer here at the Indiana Firearms Coalition is who's going to fight for our gun rights in the legislature because we have a ton of Republicans, a super majority in fact, in both chambers who say they're pro-gun. But Indiana's gun laws are always lagging behind and in many ways we have some very big problems with our gun laws. So we have a real problem. We have, everyone says they're pro-gun and our gun laws don't reflect it. So as gun voters, our job is to decide in these primaries who will best fight for our gun rights. So we're going to begin by breaking down the, uh, the candidacy of Brian Pash. Now we gave Mr. Pash our survey and we asked him the same questions that we asked Mr. Stewald. The difference is that Brian completed his gun rights candidate questionnaire 100% pro-gun. You can see all the questions we asked him in their full detail at our website, indianafirearmscoalition.org. But we have five or six of the main questions right here on the, on, the, on the board. And what we asked Mr. Pash, for example, was, would you help us repeal Indiana's red flag gun seizure law? I don't know about you, but it's an embarrassment that in red Indiana, we have red flag gun seizure laws on the books. A red flag law allows almost anybody who doesn't like you to make a complaint with a judge that you might be dangerous. And if the judge agrees, and they almost always agree, your guns will be confiscated before you've been charged with a crime, arrested for a crime, or convicted of a crime. Most of the time it happens, the seizure happens before you ever even know about it, thanks to ex parte proceedings. It's a shame we have them. It was passed in 2005. They were expanded in 2019. We want to repeal them. And Brian Pash said he would help us repeal red flags. In fact, he promised to sponsor the bill. Then we asked him, what about gun-free zones? Because everyone knows gun-free zones are deadly. Everyone knows that madmen always go to a gun-free zone to get a body count. Everyone knows that they protect bad guys and they endanger good guys. We want to repeal those here in Indiana. Brian Pash said, yes, I'd vote for it and I would sponsor the bill. You see, this is the kind of leadership that we're looking for in the fight for gun rights. And then we asked Mr. Pash, what about the Second Amendment Preservation Act? SAPA law for short. We filed this for the last couple of years. The goal of this bill is to create a 10th Amendment style firewall all the way around Indiana. And what it would do is tell Joe Biden, hey, you can pass whatever tyrannical BS you want in Congress. You can mandate gun control via executive orders. But here in Indiana, we're not going to help you enforce it. If you want to enforce this tyranny here, you better bring your own manpower because our cops will only be enforcing Indiana law when it comes to firearms, ammunition, and accessories. SAPA is moving in red states all across the country. It is a top priority for us, and Brian said he would sponsor that bill. All the rest of the gun control we asked him about, all the bills that were filed this year, the AR-15 ban, the gun registries, uh, attempts to raise the age on when a Hoosier can buy a firearm, he opposes everything. So Brian Pash, 100% pro-gun, we're very happy to acknowledge that. And that brings us to Representative Greg Stewerwald. Now Greg has been in office for a very, very long time. First elected in 2007, very long time in Hendricks County. And right now, if you bump into Greg on the campaign trail or talk to him at an event, you would think that he literally wrote the Second Amendment in a tablet of stone with a hammer and a chisel. To hear this guy talk right now, he is God's gift to gun owners here in Indiana. So we're going to kind of go through this. Is that really the case? The answer, you're probably catching my sarcasm. The answer is absolutely not. 
Remember how I said Indiana passed red flags in 2005 and expanded them again in 2019? Yeah, Greg Stewart-Wald, he was a yes vote on that. He linked up with the Rhinos and the Democrats and passed that bill in 2019. You can look it up for yourself. It was House Bill 1651, roll call vote number 146, the date, February 12, 2019. The time, in case you want to really get down into it, was 3.11 p.m. So as red states all across the country are fighting to stop red flags, or in some cases, ban red flags, here in Indiana, pro-gun Republican, heavy sarcasm intended, Greg Stewart voted to expand red flag gun seizures. Terrible, terrible stuff. But that wasn't it. Just last session, he was a yes vote on a Democrat-sponsored gun control bill that outlawed Glock triggers. If you're asking yourself, what is a Glock trigger? Well, I'll tell you. A Glock trigger makes a Glock handgun fire fully automatic. It is already illegal at the federal level. It is not necessary to pass additional gun control here in Indiana because it's already illegal at the federal level. Of course, it shouldn't be, just getting that said. And so the Democrats cobbled together a gun control bill. Their goal was to stop any forward momentum that we were building on the Second Amendment Preservation Act. They wanted to stop any pro-gun bills by sponsoring and advancing a gun control bill. And they did. And Greg Stewart helped them do it. He didn't have to vote for that trash. Dozens of pro-gun Republicans voted no. I mean, real pro-gun Republicans, not, not the fake ones. But Greg Stewart was a yes vote on this gun control bill. In fact, he was a co-sponsor on the bill. So talk about sucking away the energy from the pro-gun side. He aided and abetted the Democrats in passing this gun control bill, House Bill 1365, roll call vote number 343, the date April 3, 2023, at 2.44 p.m. Again, shameful stuff, a complete betrayal to gun owners and all the campaign promises he's given for all these years. And then at the same time, as I mentioned, we were fighting to expand or to pass the Second Amendment Preservation Act, uh, HB 1117. Do you think Stewart co-sponsored that? Of course not. This session, we were working on legislation with, with, with uh, Representative Zach Payne to repeal, to repeal red flag laws, House Bill 1409. Do you think Stewart co-sponsored that? Of course not. So every time the Democrats and the rhinos need Greg Stewart to support their gun control agenda, he's right there. Every time gun owners come to him and say, hey, co-sponsor pro-gun bills, he's nowhere to be found. It's not good stuff, folks. So maybe you're asking yourself, well, gosh, what the heck has he done or what bills has he worked on in the legislature? That's a good question. Last session, he authored House Bill 1558. Now, think about this. We have a president in the White House, I should say a resident in the White House right now, who is doing everything he can to federalize law enforcement all across the country. He is trying to use federal dollars to uh, temporarily hire our local cops and make them ATF agents. He is trying to temporarily hire our prosecutors and make them DO, uh, DOJ agents. His entire agenda right now is to do away with the idea of state sovereignty, local law enforcement, local prosecutors, and make everyone report to the all-powerful federal government. The last thing that we should be doing in a red state is surrendering our state sovereignty to this tyrannical president. But that's not what Greg Stewart thinks. He was the lead sponsor, again on House Bill 1558, that would create a task force between the federal government and the, uh, the state of Indiana for the purpose of digging into gun violence. Everyone knows that gun violence is a moniker for gun control because guns don't cause the problem. Guns don't cause violence. Criminals do. 
murderers do, rapists do, kidnappers do, thieves do, guns don't cause the problem. So when Greg Stewart files a bill trying to further get us into bed with the Biden White House, he is only doing everything he can to further take away our state sovereignty and to make the idea of being uh, reliant upon the federal government a reality here in Indiana. That's the kind of legislation that he is filing, claiming to be a pro-gun Republican. So guys, I'm sure by now you can see, oh, and not for nothing, he's refusing to fill out the Indiana Firearms Coalition Gun Rights Candidate Questionnaire. But you know what? He doesn't have to. We all know where he stands. Greg Stewart is a major rhino in the Indiana House. So guys, if you bump into Brian Pash, if he's door knocking on your door, if you see him at an event, thank him for proudly standing up and signing his candidate survey 100% pro-gun. And if you hear from or see Greg Stewart be sure and tell this rhino he better apologize to you for every time he voted against your right to keep and bear arms. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Do us a favor, share it on all of your social media platforms. Make sure every voter has this information. And to see more breakdowns on more races, go to our YouTube channel, go to our Facebook page and our website for more information. Finally, guys, join the fight for freedom today at joinifc.com. Com.